Good afternoon. How's everybody's day so far? Here we go. Um, I have to tell you, I'm ready for a break. I just did six round tables next door on the paid search track. And uh, in the 11 year history of our company, we've never had any customer facing downtime until today. <laughs> so while I had my phone turned off next door, um, we were the victim of a denial of service attack this morning. Uh, we were not the target, but the gateway that we're co-located with, uh, somebody else was the target of a big attack today. So here I am at a key uh, ETEL conference talking about website performance and speed, and you can't look at my site today. <laughs> so I think things are back to normal, and uh, you might hear about the victim of the attack uh, on the news tonight. I think it was a pretty big player um, in the space. So uh, thanks again for coming. Uh, this, this is my first ETEL. Um, I'm always very interested to meet all the niche retailers um, at these conferences. I'm always amazed at what people do for a living, and uh, you know, people can do 50 million in monogram paper clips and all sorts of things. So, and I'm, and I'm certainly a representative of a niche retailer. Um, you may be wondering where my uh, presentation is, and uh, since you're so kind to uh, give me your attention today, I've actually reserved the presentation for your exclusive uh, viewing. Uh, all you need to do is send an email to me at Coolabar. Uh, put in the subject line, uh, hey, Coolabar guy, and you'll get automatically sent uh, the presentation. I know there's been some trouble with connectivity in the sessions today, so if you can't get it right now, you can certainly get it uh, any time. So you're, you're the exclusive audience of the, uh, of the full presentation today. Uh, one minute about Coolabar. Uh, again, 11 years old this year, and uh, uh, we basically make sun protection that you wear. Uh, we we um, basically provide the highest standards in sun protection. Uh, you know, four out of five dentists recommend Trident to their patients who chew gum. Um, four out of five dermatologists recommend our product to patients that have a need for sun protection. Um, and uh, we're actually hoping to break into the uh, Internet Retailer 500 this year. So uh, another um, note of full disclosure, uh, this is our current site. This is our women's uh, clothing section page. Um, even if you can get onto our site today, which I don't know if you can, um, you actually can't look at anything on the site as it is right now um, versus what I'm going to talk to you about today because we just replatformed at the end of last year. So basically, everything I'm going to tell you about in the next 30 minutes, we are now going to be doing again on our new platform. Uh, we had a very aggressive timeline for our platform relaunch. Uh, we couldn't get everything done the way we wanted to, so we're actually going to be going through a lot of these uh, uh, topics again uh, on our new platform. So let's talk about the, the need for speed. Um, I guess you, know, you can pick your um, metric, and I guess if I was going to rename the session today, um, I think it would be really how to make money uh, and how to not waste your customer's time. Because the, you know, pick your metric about you know, how much business you're theoretically losing for each second of increased uh, uh, web response time on your site. You know, there's a lot of statistics out there. I've seen Forrester statistics that say for each additional second of weight, you're losing 20% of your revenue. Uh, so it can be quite, you know, again, pick your statistic. There's a lot of them out there. Um, I think we heard in an earlier session today about uh, pogo sticking once people hit your site. So they're going from a product page back to the section. Uh, well, there's also something called uh, SERP hopping, search engine result page hopping. So you've done your search, you're on the Google search results, and people have this tendency to start bouncing back between uh, everybody. If you're still in an early phase, of doing research on a product that you're interested in buying. People are hopping in and out of those search results. And if you're not loading, um, by the time they are finished and ready to go back and click again, uh, you're probably missing a big opportunity uh, on, the, on the SERP hoppers. And you know, another interesting thing, again, I'm, I come from a lot of this, as you'll see today, as from the perspective of a search marketer. And um, you know, what, what does Google and Bing want? They want relevant results in their search. And timely is relevant. You know, that's another importance of time. Um, and guess what? If you know, Just do the math. If your page loads 10 times worse than somebody else's page, uh, this probably means that Google, uh, you know, why would Google crawl your page when they can go to crawl 10 others in the same time it takes to crawl one of yours? So it's just you know, basic maths. And I think there's also a big impact uh, on the quality score of your site, according to Google, uh, which could impact your quality score in paid search. So there is a, a need, need for speed. Um, I think you all agree with that. Uh, so, you know, what were our specific goals? And, and this, this project took on uh, a slightly distant, different twist. There was a different motivation when we took on this project. I mean, of course, 
the experience of the end visitor to our site is, is key. Um, but basically, the way we came at this project was that we were determined to eliminate what is called uh, technical, technical barriers to SEO. And uh, basically, we were kind of stuck um, in Google and, and Yahoo and Bing at the time, um, kind of in the mid-range of a search engine result on a lot of our key terms. And uh, you know, we tried everything. And um, I, the one thing that you're also going to be the benefit of today is I'm, I'm offering you uh, four freebies today. Uh, and the full details of these freebies uh, will be at the end of the presentation. But the first freebie um, is the company that actually pointed me into the direction of this idea of eliminating technical barriers to SEO, and it's uh, Bruce Clay. Uh, Bruce Clay is uh, an SEO outfit out of uh, Simi Valley, California. And his basic premise is that if you're talking about CEO, I know that, uh, SEO, I know this is not an SEO track, but if there's three things that really drive SEO, it's the content is king. You know, you gotta have great content. Uh, links are a factor, and then the, th the third leg on, on his pedestal is these technical barriers that we're going to talk about. And basically, you know, in that sense, the audience of this project was really the Googlebot and the spiders and the crawlers. And we wanted to do everything we could to minimize the distractions as the Googlebot was uh, you know, surfing through our site. And, and actually, the, the biggest gain we ever had in our SEO efforts was uh, three to six months following the conclusion of this project, where we finally broke out of those middle positions in the search engine result page and jumped up to uh, the top on all of our key terms. Uh, and that was after seven or eight years of trying on content and links and all the other good stuff that's the principles of, uh, of SEO. So, and of course, again, the other, the other big thing is, uh, you know, what about the end visitor and as they come to the site? And so we did have that in mind as well. And our goal with this project you know, we, we kind of set a lofty goal. We wanted to cut the time uh, in half that it took someone to navigate through a typical path on our site. So that was our goal, and we ended up achieving that. And uh, even better news is the biggest gains were on our key uh, e-commerce uh, paths to purchase, the section pages, the category pages, and actually the number one gain was on our product detail pages um, on the site. Um, and so I, I mentioned at the end of the, the presentation today, you'll see one freebie from Bruce Clay. Um, he has a set of online tools, and you can get a 30-day free t trial of his tools. And uh, those tools talk a lot about those SEO barriers, um, the technical barriers to SEO. Uh, and another freebie is from a company in Minneapolis that helped us with this project. It's a digital design firm called Firstscribe. And uh, the, the one thing I'll say about them is that they're very sensitive to this. You know, it's trade-offs whenever you're doing these projects. There's a trade-off between the design, uh, between SEO, and then the technical implementation and the resources that you have and the platform you're on. And this, this agency was particularly sensitive to you know, a design that wouldn't destroy SEO and also skills in uh, development that would undo any of these design challenges or any of these technical barriers. So uh, you can contact them and they'll just tell them uh, you're, you heard about uh, them from the Coulibar guy and they'll be glad to give you uh, uh, an assessment of your site. Um, so back, you know, back to the, the, the customer, uh, I'm going to start to show you some of the results. Um, this is a summary of, of the biggest areas where we saw gains uh, in our project. And I'm going to go into detail on, on most of these if there's time. Um, and again, the reason why I'm changing the title of the session is I'm not necessarily going to save you any money on the first one because I think it's critical to invest properly in hosting. Uh, and that was the, the biggest win in our project was uh, the, the change in hosting. Uh, image optimization was a big win. Um, I call it fanatical scrubbing of code, and you'll hear, hear the details of that. Um, you wouldn't believe the duplication um, that we had on the site. Uh, it's quite humorous in some cases. Um, and then a bunch of stuff that we weren't even using anymore, legacy features, and the code for some of these features was still on our pages. Um, and then, if, again, if there's time, I'm going to talk to you a few things about what I call you know, site performance beyond speed. Speed isn't everything, you know, the user experience counts as well. So I have to give you a little bit of background. I don't know, um, maybe I can have a show of hands of how many people are familiar with or are currently using some sort of a web performance monitoring tool. So it looks like there's quite a few of you. And so for, for those of you that might not be familiar, um, basically web performance mon monitoring, typically like on a day like today, except I had my phone turned off, uh, we have scripts running on major backbones across the country. So we have New York and Miami, Chicago, and LA, 
there's basically a robot sitting at the internet service provider right at the backbone and it's running a script of our, 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 our most common e-commerce transaction. So it's visiting our home page, section page category, product page. It actually does a site search along the way. It goes to a product page, puts something in the cart, and then, and then goes on to the checkout page. So every 15 minutes, you know, that you know, robot on one of our four ISPs is running that script. Now, typically, web performance monitoring with, you know, comes in key for a day like today because it's going to tell me if the transaction fails, which it did. As soon as I got back to the room today, I turned on my phone and the transaction had failed. Um, there was objects on the pages that were failing to load. That happened today, so I had two going. Um, the, the total amount of weight in the transaction changed. It went to zero. <laughs> so you know, again, it's looking at all the assets that are loading in the process of the seven-step transaction. If it's above and below a certain threshold, it'll give me a warning. And then um, I even forget what the other one is. Um, you know, basically, if, if, if the, you know, basically, the whole thing fails. So uh, all four of those alerts went off today when my phone failed, um, and, uh, but we're, we're back in business. So that's, that's the backbone view. Um, and again, that's the typical use of a web monitoring platform is to get those alerts and make sure your site is up. But we actually use the tool to look at all the assets that are loading on all those pages. And I'll talk to you more about the, the detailed analysis that we did of those pages and what we did to clean up uh, the code. And so the, the other side of uh, web performance monitoring is you can actually simulate the user experience. So we're sampling visitors, like every fifth visitor to the site, um, and there's a little beacon on the site that actually records, you know, from the visitor's perspective, uh, what, what, they're, what they're doing. And, and in our case, you know, the backbone time, let's say it's 15 seconds, the visitor time, by the time it goes over that last mile, maybe 30 seconds to go through the whole transaction. And the other thing you get on the user experience end is differences in browser, uh, operating system, their connectivity, geography. And again, that's the typical use of these uh, tools, but um, we, we took a little bit of a, a different take on it. Um, and, and before I go into this one, uh, the third freebie for today, because I want you guys to have the tools that you need, um, CompuWare Gomez, the, my account executive at Gomez, will give you a uh, week-long free trial of their tool. Uh, you can, they'll set up an account for you on a trial basis. You can use all the tools that you want, uh, get some reporting. Um, and this is a, an example of a typical uh, waterfall chart. Uh, and what this is showing is um, this is a waterfall chart of our homepage, and it's actually only the very beginning part of the homepage. Uh, that big blue bar across the top is the total time it takes that page to load to the backbone. And then all those little bits going down in order that they load is the amount of time that each individual component of the page takes to load. And then you get even more detail on some of the little bits. There's four different measures of different connectivity and timeouts and, and all that sort of stuff. So again, that's the typical use of the tool, but what we did is we dumped all this data out um, and created a baseline report for our, our time before we started the project, and then at the end we, we used uh, a measure to see what we did at the end. But we also did a lot of work to um, you know, here's the results. I'll, I'm going to give you the detail here in a second. So uh, we basically planned this project over the course of almost five months. We did all the analysis. We did the planning. Once we decided what needed to be fixed, we got the right vendors in place. And then um, this is just a 30-day snapshot right as we were implementing it. Basically, once we were ready to go, we tried to implement everything within a 30-day window. And if you went back a little bit, a few more days, we were north of 16 seconds for someone to, for the, that little robot at the ISP to complete that transaction. Uh, and then by, by the time 30 days went by, a few more days after this chart, we were down in the eight second range. So from the perspective of that robot at the ISP, we had cut the transaction time in half. And then this is some detail of what happened on a page by page basis. And it's interesting to note that, um, for instance, if you look at the blue squares, uh, that's the representation of our homepage. So uh, you can see the blue squares. Um, you know, if you look at the home page relative to other pages on the site, you may say, well, geez, you know, shouldn't your home page be going faster than that? But since the home page was the first page in our seven-step transaction, it's actual, actually responsible for bringing all the overhead. You know, we have a global navigation. So we have a top navigation, left navigation, bottom navigation. So the first page in your script is going to get all that overhead. And, and so if you have to pick a page, you know, pick one that has a, a navigation that's representative of the rest, the rest of your site. So you know, the home page is sort of carrying that overhead of the global navigation. And really on our home page, the only thing that's different other than the global navigation is a main image in the middle. 
Um, and then the, the next page in the sequence is going to one of our department pages, and that's the yellow line across the bottom. So you can see you know, that's already a very fast page before we started the project. And we had a little bit of, a, of improvement, mainly because of Im image optimization. But the reason that page is so fast is because it's not reloading all that overhead that the home page had, had already loaded. Um, and it's a key point, and by the way, we discovered in some cases, in certain sequences on our site, that that overhead was reloading on a page. So you basically, if, if it did it on this women's page, you'd see the performance jump up you know, to be as slow as what the home page was. So just a, a couple other quick examples. The, the orange triangles, that's um, a women's clothing section page. It's also called a, a thumbnail page. And you can see that that's one of the biggest places where we had wins. And I'll go into more details on this in a minute, but basically the, the big impact there was that um, all those thumbnail uh, images were moved to a high-speed dedicated server. We got out of the shared services from our e-commerce platform provider and moved all of them out to our own dedicated server. Uh, so you see there was, uh, it's interesting, you see that big drop uh, in performance or in increase in performance. And then it started to get worse again. What, what ended up happening is our creative team ended up loading the assets back into the content management system of our e-commerce provider. And then we had to correct it again at the very end of the project where we got them all back to the high-speed dedicated server. So you see a little bit of a roller coaster effect on that one. Uh, another inter interesting one is the search results page. Um, you can see that it actually got worse for a while. And it turns out we had some legacy analytics programs loaded on that page. And, and we made the decision to disconnect all those from the rest of the site. And we forgot to disconnect them on that page. So as they were disconnected, the performance of that page got worse and worse. And once we figured it out, we finally got rid of all those legacy analytics packages on that page. And you can see how much the time improved uh, on that one. And then a couple other key pages are the, uh, the item page. Um, you know, it was basically cut in half. And then the cart and, uh, and uh, checkout. Um, I'm going to go very quickly through this chart. It's kind of an eye chart. Um, but again, this is the, 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 the amount of time it took to do the, the total transaction at the top. So we get to navigate across those seven pages. It took the robot 16 seconds on a pre basis, and then on a post basis, it was down to 10 seconds. Another really interesting thing is that we took our server out of the shared services in California. And again, we got our own high speed dedicated server out of Eden Prairie, Minnesota. And so you can see a, a dramatic shift in geography. You know, even though we did that, the, the time was improved substantially even in California. Went from about 13 seconds down to 11 seconds. Uh, and even in Arizona, it improved. But look at the difference in Chicago. For all of our visitors from Chicago, it basically was uh, you know, cutting the time in half. And even in Miami, look at the difference there. I mean, starting at 20 seconds and then down to 11 seconds, you know, just because the server was you know, half the distance across the country than it was before. And then some, uh, I'm going to skip this detail and look at, the, this is the visitor perspective. So now, you know, again, this is the actual visitor hitting the site, not the robot. So uh, pre, uh, on the baseline, it was almost 35 seconds to navigate those pages. And then it, it, it cut in more than half uh, on the post measure. And you know, just some interesting wins there. Again, I mentioned that our item page, um, it, we basically cut three quarters of the time out of that page during this process from the visitor's perspective. Um, again, we didn't see much improvement in the home page, but again, that's carrying all that overhead uh, and big wins in our departments and sections and so on and so forth. It's interesting, our checkout didn't see as much improvement and it's still the worst page after this, um, uh, after this exercise. It's because it's a page that we literally cannot control. You know, we're on a shared e-commerce platform with thousands of merchants and there's really very little we could do uh, to change the performance of that, of that page. So now, now I have a couple of questions for you. I'm going to talk about, again, our biggest gain was from our decision about hosting. And so I'm going to ask one question. Uh, how many people are paying about $10 or less a month for their hosting? Anybody? Well, I guess that's good news. Um, so I guess the rest of you are all paying about uh, more than $10. That's, that's good news. How, how, many don't, how many people don't know what your company's paying to host your website? A couple, couple of you? Well, anyway, we. You know, kind of look back on it now and chuckle, but um, again, we were on an e-commerce platform at the time where basically our hosting was $9.95 a month. Um, and, and there was big consequences uh, because of that. Um, we you know, basically didn't give it, a, give, it a, give it a second thought when we signed up with them. But we ended up making the decision 
uh, to move to our own high-speed dedicated server. So our expenses per month um, were about 500 a month. So it's a pretty modest investment to, you know, for the thing that was the biggest driver in increasing the performance of our website. So you know, here's a couple things that also happened in the process. So what happens, um, again, we're looking across all seven of those pages in our e-commerce transaction. And I was quite surprised to figure out that there's actually 31 different entities involved in bringing all those pages together. Um, and through the course of this exercise, we managed to eliminate six of those. Um, and, and they were the six worst ones, so that's why it had such a big impact on performance. But I'm still quite surprised that after we completed this exercise, how many different host entities are involved in delivering a site. And you know, 16 of them, most of them were because of the sort of the infrastructure of the e-commerce platform that we were on at the time. And then I guess we're a big fan of third-party analytics. We have all sorts of tools on the site. Um, so that was six of them. We ended up still with two image servers and, and one site search host. So you, again, you might be surprised if you get on your Gomez account with your free trial, you can actually run a transaction and have it assemble all the elements by host. And then it, it counts up for you how many total hosts are involved in the transaction. And you can see all the elements that those hosts are responsible for delivering to your site. The, the other important thing about our, our own high-speed dedicated server is a thing called connections. And the analogy I use here is if you were to make a phone call to your friend and you picked up the phone, dialed the number, waited for him to answer and said hello, and then hung up, and then picked up the phone again and dialed, and then said the next uh, word in your conversation, and just kept doing that over and over again. And that was basically happening as the result of the service we had on our shared hosting provider. So going back to that thumbnail page where we have all of our thumbnail images of all of our products, each one of those was like making, you know, make one phone call, get the image, hang up, get the next image, hang up. So in, in, in reducing that, uh, we basically there's also a thing called keep alive. You may have heard that term. It's basically the amount of time that a connection to the host will stay alive. Um, so ask your IT folks about your stay alive time or your persistent connections. So we, we got rid of a ton of connections um, in this project. We had over 210 uh, at the start of the project, and I think we, what did we do, get rid of over 70 of them. Um, and I think that was you know, clearly the biggest, you know, second biggest win uh, on this project to get rid of all those uh, connections. Um, the other thing we did is, again, in, in evaluating all those hosts and, and evaluating all the things that those hosts were responsible for serving, some of these uh, third-party hosts were doing a terrible job. And so where possible, we actually decided to take any content that we could from those third parties and host it on our own high-speed dedicated server. A great example is if your site has any of those uh, assurance badges at the bottom. I mean, it's even more important now with all the sh social sharing widgets that there are out there. Um, I mean, basically, in a lot of cases, you have the choice whether that widget or icon or whatever it is comes from the third party, or you can take the code and the image and the icon, put it on your own resources, and then you have for con full control over it. And that's what we did uh, as much as possible. We took over control of all those third parties. I have an expression that your site is only as good as the next third party that you choose to add to it. So I encourage people to you know, really pay close attention to a lot of the, the toys and widgets and gadgets that are out there. Uh, you might see a few of them in the exhibit halls today. Um, so again, uh, we took over as much content as possible. We moved our server location. You saw the impact that that had. Um, you know, this is another SEO thing. Um, we, we actually had our own dedicated IP block. So there's um, four parts to an IP address. A, B, C, and D, we had an exclusive um, C block. Nobody else was being served from that C block. The, the idea is that Google will look at your IP address, and if there's other people that are being a little bit naughty on that same C block, you may get a penalty um, from being in, I guess, what they consider a bad neighborhood. And so to have control of your own clean C block was another kind of SEO implication to having our own server. Um, Another big thing I'm not going to touch on a lot, but um, you know, it was a big win to take um, all the assets out of the shared hosting facility and move them to our server. We, we gave ourselves basically a rule that no image would be moved unless we made sure that it was optimized for presentation on the web. And the one, the one metric I forgot to get in this project was the total weight of the transaction uh, pre and post. But my guess is that we probably cut 20 to 25% of the weight of all the images out, uh, which had a big impact on the, the amount of time it took to serve those images. Um, 
that we talked about here. So this is a summary of that host and connections. We won't spend a lot of time on that again. Uh, Pre-measure pre was 31, 31 hosts down to 25. And you can see like on our site search page, we had, it was really kind of a funny story, funny now, but uh, we had a site search on a third party um, it was on a separate subdomain. So we had a whole bunch of analytics installed um, across the site, including that subdomain. And then we decided to drop a bunch of packages and add the new packages, and we forgot to add them. Actually, we left the old ones on the site search, and we added all the new ones. So um, we just had too much stuff going on on the, on the site search page. Uh, so we actually dropped a total of seven different hosts. And then you can see the number of ten, uh, connections that were dropped. Uh, for instance, on that section page, uh, you know, we dropped 22 connections, um, which you know, made that page be uh, very snappy. Uh, it was very interesting. I'll talk about this one maybe a little bit more, too. Look at the difference on the card page. Uh, we dropped 46 connections. Um, turns out we were loading every asset on our card page twice. And I have no idea to today how it happened, but my guess is that in our content management system, that the, the typical user uses, you can actually upload the image for each of the buttons in the cart and checkout. And then we went through a design project where we kind of reskinned the cart and checkout. And then all the images were being called a second time from a global uh, CSS uh, style sheet. So we basically we, you know, we never knew it until we did this project, but every asset on the cart and checkout was loading twice, which was you know, doubling the overhead for those pages. So talking about fanatical scrubbing of code, um, I actually have uh, the printout of what our code looks like now, it's, um, we, we basically viewed the, you know, if you go to a, a web page and, and say view source, you know, you can see a dump of all the code that drives the page. Uh, when we did that before we started the project, we, we basically cut and paste the, the source code out of our home page into a Word document, and it was uh, 36 pages long, single spaced. Um, and then, so this is a kind of an interesting metric for you. Um, you know, at the end of this project, we were down to eight pages. And so you can see the amount of code that we were able to clean up in this process. And again, uh, you know, a lot of it was um, you know, just stuff that was legacy that we never bothered to clean up. Um, another interesting thing about it was, and this is another SEO take on this project, is that on those 36 pages of code, ends up that the visible content on the page, like the item description on the page, it was the last thing to load. So, the, you know, the Google bot had to go through 36 pages of stuff and finally found the, the key content for the page. So with a little trickery, we you know, not only cleaned up all the code, but we had the visible content of the page loading within the first 10% of the code on the page so the, the, the spiders and the crawlers could find it right off the bat. Um, the other thing that, that happened is that uh, our, our HTML code was just in, in extremely bloated. I mean, there's, there's no way around it. And I think you know, what happens from time to time is you might get a page output from the creative suite that you're using, and you know, there's got to be some scrubbing done to get rid of the sort of the extras. And I also find this when you're using what's called a rich text editor in your content management system. You know, it's one of those things that allows you to you know, highlight the word and hit the B button for bold, and you know, highlight the word and hit the I button for italics. Well, if you switch the view on those systems to look at the source code that it's generating, you'll often find that it is an extremely bloated code. And so if you are in a practice of using a, a rich tech, you know, sometimes they call them WYSIWYG editors. Or and another thing we found is people generating code or actually content in Word and copying and pasting it into the content management system, which is a very bad thing as well. So we had a lot of work to do to clean up that bloated code and, and was the main reason why we had uh, so much extra stuff in there. Uh, and then we had, uh, I don't know how many CSS files we had. There was a lot of them. We had a lot of JavaScript files. Um, not only did we consolidate them all into a single file, but um, at the time, I think we had 10 years of legacy styles. Uh, it was it kind of read like a, the rings of a tree. You know, from the day the site first launched, um, there was even a date on the CSS file of uh, 2002. So that same file had just been added to and added to and added to, and just became this extremely unmanageable um, uh, CSS file. And so we, we thought it was important to clean all that up and get down to a, back to a single file. Uh, the same thing with the JavaScript files. So uh, I, I talked about a little bit of this already, the sort of the duplication that was on the site. Um, I already talked about our story of that you know, neglected subdomain for our site search. We just forgot about it for a long time and had a lot of cleanup work to do. 
Uh, that was the, the other page where it turns out that, uh, again, the first page in our transaction should have taken all of the overhead. Turns out on, when people landed on our site search, um, they were actually hosting a second copy of that global navigation in, on the subdomain. So that page was being doubly penalized again because it was reloading all those assets from the global navigation. Um, oh, and another funny thing there, funny now, uh, the vendor basically, they couldn't have picked a worse page to copy that global navigation from. They ac accidentally copied a page where we had some um, Google Analytics scripts loading to do some testing. And so by copying that page, they ended up copying all that stuff into the search uh, user's interface as well. So we had to clean that up. And then again, I already told you the story about the forgotten analytics and, and, and adding the new ones. Again, we found all those images that were loading twice. Uh, that's where the Gomez tool will be very helpful. You can dump everything out of that tool and sort it by file name, and you can easily see where the duplications are. Um, and then we, we, we've become very diligent on all the third-party gadgets. I mean, I think when we started this project, we had eight different analytic tools uh, running on the site, and we dropped it down to two. Um, so you should have a global committee at your company to decide on what gadgets get added to your site. Um, and then uh, another interesting point is um, a lot of times um, when you move from the, the main path to purchase on the site, you know, we, we have a full global navigation. We have a full top navigation with drop downs. We have a full left navigation, full bottom navigation. But oftentimes you'll find that uh, when you hit your cart and checkout, you want to minimize the distractions. And, um, and that's actually another big thing we did to try to minimize the load um, in, in, the, in the secure cart. Because the, uh, the other issue about the secure cart is you're moving from a HTTP domain to an HTTPS domain. Uh, that was the case in our e-commerce platform. And what that does is it doubles all of the hosts. Because uh, from, the, from the aspect of loading all these assets to the page, uh, an HTTPS host is fundamentally a different host than the, 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 the base one. So that's a, another reason why we still had so many hosts at the end of the uh, exercise, because you had to count all the ones that followed into the cart twice. So um, that's uh, basically the, the sort of the detail of the big wins in, in this project. And then you know, a lot of that was really speed and performance focused. And I guess there's another uh, definition of speed or performance, or actually sort of definitions beyond that. Um, okay, so let's say your site's loading fast now, but there's still some really big distractions that we uncovered during this process that were really hampering the, the user experience on the site. Um, how are we doing on time, by the way? Moving down to yellow. Um, so this is your last uh, and final freebie. Um, Rigor. Rigor is another uh, web performance monitoring company, um, and they're ready to give you a, a free content scan report uh, on a um, attribute of your choice. So um, what this is, is this was a scan on uh, image content. And so basically you feed your entire site map into this tool and it'll tell you if you have any broken images or broken links to images, broken links, um, 404 arrows, 301 redirects, all of that stuff. So again, uh, if, when you see the last slide of the presentation, you'll see some of these freebies. This is an example of that. And I'm going to close with this one. Um, what is the answer to this question? <laughs> This page contains both secure and not secure. Do you want us to display the not secure? Now, I would answer yes, because I don't want to miss anything on the page. But I guess the typical consumer would probably answer no, right? So this was the IE6 and 7 version of this question. Now what's the question? Or now what's the answer? Uh, they basically reversed the logic so that if you don't want the non-secure stuff, you have to answer uh, the other way. I can't even keep it straight myself. But this is just another example of what I call performance beyond speed. Um, you know, we had quite a few of these errors on our site. Um, and obviously, a big distraction, even though your pages are loading fast, if you pop these types of errors, that's a big uh, distraction for your, your uh, customer. Uh, another one, um, hopefully you're familiar with the profile of your user and what their typical browser and operating system are. Because it turns out we were not looking at the right browser operating system combination when we were doing QA on our site. So isn't it great how everything looks in Firefox and Safari on a Mac? But our biggest profile was, at the time, uh, IE7 run, running uh, Windows XP. So when we look at the site in that environment, um, we had some big surprises. So that's my other piece of advice, is make sure you're looking at the, 
uh, a combination of stuff that's reflective of your user base. Um, someone will talk about page load versus perceived render, and I basically don't look at perceived render at all because basically what that means is, yeah, the page looks like it's loading fast, but there's a bunch of stuff happening behind the scenes. And that's what keeps all those wheels turning. Doesn't it drive you crazy when you hit a site and all those wheels keep spinning? So again, if you have any of those going on in your site for any length of time, that's another big thing that we got rid of in this project. Page errors, that little annoying yellow triangle at the bottom of your browser, we got rid of a lot of those. Um, and here's the list of freebies. And I think I'm just about out of time for questions, but maybe we can uh, entertain a couple. I've uh, stunned you all into silence. Any, any questions? I think, thanks a lot for your time. <laughs>